Good morning, uh, another morning. Uh, just so everyone knows, I'm not a regular route driver. I usually, I fill in most of the time when I drive the uh, trucks and the routes, so three times this week, or was it two times this week so far, we've had to fill in, and it's Wednesday, so no big deal, but we're gonna get some better video in the daytime. This is a Corrado can, and I'll see you out there. Arm works. We're gonna put it up. I'll see you on the route again. All right, headed out to this route. I got this uh, bridge up here. I'm gonna cut to it in a second. So I gotta put my box down. The, the arms uh, are able to get under there because the arms would hit that bridge. All right, I gotta put the camera down because there's a cop here, but uh, get under the bridge. I've done this, so that's why I'm confident. All right, we're on the route. Somerset, New Jersey. Let's go. Obviously, we, uh, I've been picking up garbage for about an hour now. The video is better when it's lighter out. I gotta get a microphone for these rides. Otherwise, I gotta enunciate here. Well, there we go. This truck, let's see, I came up about. I started driving these trucks about nine years ago. Uh, I started driving the small ones at first. I always had the knack just for the machinery, I guess, but... Uh, takes some getting used to, that's all. I mean, first I drove a front loader. It's hard to... Uh, what's it called? I drove a front loader at first, which is this truck, but without the box on it. That, that's a little less complicated to drive. It's like less, uh, less stressful. You're not moving the arm while you're roll while you're moving the truck. Like, you know, you're not operating while you're moving. There's a lot less wires in the area because I got neighborhoods and stuff. Uh, from this truck, the neighborhoods, you gotta watch the wires when you lift up the box. But when you're doing a front loader, you gotta watch the wires also. This truck and the front loader, they're not the same, but they're similar because they both got a joystick. And if you can do one joystick, you can do them all. Uh, even the one arm on the side load. You gotta get your class B CDL. wires above me I gotta watch so as I'm approaching this tote I'm watching the car to my right in my mirror I'm looking at that wire to make sure that it doesn't uh, move because if it's moving obviously I'm hitting it so I'd have to back out but that's okay so now I got the can as I say to the guys I'm training since I got the can the job is done so now all I'm focused on is not hitting anything the wire I'm looking at everything Make sure the rear end of the truck doesn't swing out into the car, which is very, very rare unless you're extremely close. But I'll get some footage. I'm gonna try to get some footage if there's like tighter areas, obviously, because that'll be uh, pretty cool.
gonna tell you something. These new trucks with the sensors, I swear it's so annoying. The blade wasn't all the way back, as in it wasn't back six inches further than it should have been, so the, the thing wouldn't dump. That wasn't exactly my fault, but when once you know the truck, because I don't, I haven't driven this truck in, in a couple months. Uh, then, like right now, when I bring the box back down, I'm gonna have to just automatically hold the blade back because an extra couple seconds, an extra couple seconds, just so that when I go to dump it again, in case I forget. It'll just go right up and dump. It won't stop in the middle. Because if that happened, that or that could have been worse. It hit, broke the windshield or something stupid like that. And that's also another reason why on a front loader, it's not good or really okay to overload your dumpster. Because a lot of times that stuff slides out. No, no matter how good you are. If you're a really good driver, you can get away with a lot of it. But the thing is, one. That really good driver is not going to be there every day, is what we always say to customers. And two, it, it, it doesn't work out every time. Sometimes that thing can, can go through the windshield, God forbid. That's like the worst case scenario. But a piece of metal, you know, goes right through the freaking windshield. It'll, it'll hurt someone. So, just stuff you got to look for. All right, so coming up to these men, you know, I got to watch out for everything, even these basketball hoops. I can't say that our drivers, I've never knocked one over, but I've definitely touched one. And I can't say that we haven't knocked them over before. make a U-turn. I'll just get the camera set up when I pick the garbage up. I'm in somebody else's area at the moment, but I gotta make a U-turn. And a little trick on making U-turns is basically, obviously you gotta don't rely on just the camera. But when you're backing up, back up towards the driveway, almost make it seem like you're backing into the driveway because driveways, they don't have poles, mailboxes, usually basketball hoops most like almost every time they're not in the middle of a driveway so if you're a truck and you got to back up in tight areas and you don't want to go on someone's driveway uh, back up right up to it because you just have less chance of hitting stuff Another trick so I'm backing up and now before I go back into drive I'm gonna cut the wheel the other way to give myself an extra little bit I always tell my drivers don't cheat yourself when you're making a turn if you gotta let someone go behind you to swing it a little wider do it don't cheat yourself if it makes it a little bit easier
now I'm looking up to see if there's wires because I gotta dump the can anyways so what I'm gonna so I'm gonna make sure my blades back so the sensor doesn't stop the stop the arm halfway up once I know it's going up I, can, I know there's no wires so I give it a little gas and I'm gonna straighten myself out and get out of the middle of the road Whoa, well, there's no cars, there's no wires. No cars, no wires, no poles, no trees. So we're good. That definitely takes, not skill, yes, but more so confidence of just being able to just do that because that takes confidence. Like, if you've ever driven a a truck with 10 wheels in general, but something that's having, that's lifting stuff up in the air and, you know, operating, it, 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 it can get pretty uh, intimidating, I guess the best word for it is. So you got to be really comfortable, just take a deep breath and look around, make sure you're not, you know, just look, you know, measure twice, cut once, just don't do anything impulsive. I'm gonna dump it right when I get under here. I'm gonna make sure this blade is back. So for cans that are close to this car, sometimes they get a lot closer. You gotta get all the way as close to the curb as you can. Now driving from the right side is actually easier because you can see that side. But you're gonna get as close to the can as you can, turn away, and just like that. So when you turn away, obviously, what you're doing is setting yourself up so after you pick it up, when I'm rolling, the wheels already turn. It sounds obvious, but when you're in the moment, it can get a lot trickier. So, the slower, the slower you're going, the better your turn is, and so don't be slamming that gas. Let's see if these kids ask me to honk the horn. I think he's going to. Let's see if I have any fans. And of course, I got this thing, oh yeah. Yeah, he's definitely going to. Again, I'm going slowly. I'm going with the wire. The wire's hanging this way. So we're going with the wire. Because if we were coming this way, I have to be extra careful. Uh, but I'm watching the wire. If that thing starts moving, I gotta figure something out. So always watching these wires. Always looking up. One thing when I'm training, I'm looking at the guy's eyeballs to see if he's listening when I'm saying you gotta look up for the wires, you gotta look up. Because snowstorm, heavy rain, it's just bad, you know, maybe someone did a bad job hanging it, something stupid. It's your problem now.
get my push that trash can off the road so I can give myself a little more room. I'll do the same thing for this one. Let's see if I can make it a one turn. I think I got it. Boom! That's called experience right there. So for these, you come up, I'm looking at my small convex mirror. And I always say while in training, make sure you're using that arm. Don't try to get right up on it. Use the arm, Sh shoot it out, extend it. And this guy's gonna back out right when I'm coming up. But don't worry, I'll be out of here in six seconds. Oh, a little longer now. I gotta dump this thing. So it takes about four to five seconds to lift the can. Like when the when the when this can is empty. And another thing I say is um, if you wanna go faster, have your hopper empty. My, the hopper on this is what the this is getting dumped into and I guess you can consider this a hopper but if you keep this empty this can it's your day's just gonna go faster because you're not fi spending time fighting to put the garbage in like that last dumpster so if I just if I didn't dump it and I pick this one up this one would take me 30 seconds to, to get in there if everything went right I'd have to go back push it in push it in push you know like I'd have to kind of push it in, push it in, until it went down. Um, and and if, that's, if nothing even fell out of it, and then broke, because you know, of course, something like that, a light bulb would fall out, and then you're sitting there for five minutes not cleaning it up, so. Slow is smooth, and as smooth is fast, and taking a little time to dump it will save you a lot of time at the end of the day. So I'm getting this one, and the, uh, so, so first off, when it's over full like that, and, and you don't let the can settle down, it'll definitely knock a bag over. Second, okay, this one only has two cans, there's one up there that has three, but you wanna give yourself that space. Give yourself, you don't wanna be right up on the cans. Give yourself space, use the arm and shoot it out and uh, go slowly because you want to you want to be able to roll up to the can and see this can's getting full so I'm noticing that so I'm gonna try to actually shoot this bag into the corner got it got it all right and then as I'm rolling up this is all while you're driving out I got a wire here I'm good and you know what this is what we really do I can I can get one more can and I'm looking at why at wires. So after I dump this, after I dump this, instead of doing my whole system, I'm just gonna hit this red button, pull it back, and that allows me to dump it. Because on a front loader, you have to do everything manually. On this, uh, like you can, I can hit a different button, and it and it allows me to manually move the forks and the arms or to do it with the red button, which the red button means you're in work, you're working. You're using the, uh, you're using the arm. If you're not using the arm, you're able to do it manually with the forks and the uh, arms. But usually that means you have the box off and you're using it as a front loader truck. All right, we get, this is the one I was looking for earlier cans so what I'm gonna do here is my uh, the center of it is before the can so that arm when I close it it's gonna move it away from the middle can actually without having to hit reverse or anything you kind of see there and I just open it up and close it real quick to get it deeper into the uh, grabber 
So there, and then this one, same thing. I want to. I just want to move it away from the one in front of it because when I pick that one up, I can just let the truck roll forward a little bit more and get away from it all. Like this, done, roll. The, the customer's gonna have to look at their mirror, otherwise they'll hit the can, but you should be looking at me, your mirrors anyways. Now I'm doing this because it's a new customer. It's called customer service. this is gonna think but when you pay for your garbage bill every every month you're paying for that can specifically the guard the big garbage dumpster this little one you're paying for that so anything extra really shouldn't be picked up without paying um because they get the company gets charged by the ton so it's like if you use more water you're gonna pay for more water um or electricity or gas or anything else in this world um so next time i probably won't do that so like if i was a driver i'd probably pick them up and then i would let the office know to leave a note in their in their system to um this guy's complaining about something uh I know in their system to let them know like if if they have anything overloaded again that our office would tell them that our driver picked it up on this certain date and you know they can't overload stuff that, that's an extra garbage can so you know yeah you, you pay for what you the size of the service you get and, and we come two times a week uh, which is as I'm learning a lot of places do once a week so it's a little bit, you know, it's called customer service. We, we picked it up. But in case your guy doesn't pick anything extra up or anything, that's usually what it is. One and two, I would say the heavy stuff put in the can, especially if you see a guy with an arm because there's no, I mean, who cares? You're not hurting anyone, lifting, killing yourselves. Um, lifting up a 500 pound uh, can. You know. Oh, I like to put it in neutral. Uh, I mean, I know that I have plenty of space and I'm clear behind me. But when you're when you keep it in gear, like when you're going down a hill, it's good to keep it in gear, as in 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 reverse, not putting it in neutral. If you're down like a slow slope, like a light inclined slope or you know decline, and you're backing up. If you're comfortable with the truck, not a bad idea to uh, put it in neutral because you can get a little bit more speed. But you know, you lose the beeping when it backs up and stuff and the camera goes away. Well, I still have the camera, but the whole screen goes to like the backup camera. So anyways, you really shouldn't be using your camera to back up. That camera is there for like, literally what's in five feet from you. You shouldn't be using it to back up obviously but you know and, and you hear it all the time but when you drive these trucks it's just funny it's just funny picking stops up on the main roads is always a little interesting sometimes uh make sure you got your strobe lights on or otherwise your working lights that's kind of what i like to say when i'm training one, make sure those are on so that you're in the right 100%. I mean, we're in the right because we're cleaning up the garbage. But you know, God forbid someone hits you in the back or something stupid. Uh, you got your lights on. You're going to take it a little slower no matter what. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's hard, it's hard to think on the spot now that I'm doing it. But, you know, take your time. Use the arm. Going slower and not messing up is always gonna go faster than trying to do it quickly and 
knocking the can over and then now you got to get out on the main road you know and that's why the right side's a little bit easier because if you have to ever get out of the truck on a main road you know being a garbage man driver or helper is the uh, fifth deadliest job in america so whenever you don't have to get out and be near these cars uh, as le you know be near the cars as least as possible on the main road is always better safer so it's good to lift the, the arm up so that you can see it before you know it smashes the mailbox or something All right, if you want to say, uh, try to scam your garbage man without saying it, I'm going to get it on video, but what you do here is, as you're dragging the can in, you're, you're closing it. So what I'm going to do is reach out a little bit, and I'm actually going to turn away from this just because I don't even want to, I don't want to even be a part near this place. So... There you go, that's how you do that. You know what? Sometimes people that do this stuff are actually suspended, but they were not. All right, back on the main road. Sometimes you gotta go out in front of traffic a little, but if they speed up and happen to come right up on you, it's not my fault. This is one of those things. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Just don't drop anything. I don't want to be getting out on this main road. Oh, got it. this thing over again you know what i mean like right. society gets wiped out somehow because of all this yeah i you gotta got, have secrets i think the reality was you, you you basically have a group of people that have controlled the planet for centuries literally not knowing what to do with this mm -hmm. and you can see with a lot of the censorship they're trying to really like clamp down on what you can say and, and they're branding a lot of things quote unquote conspiracy theories right because you know epstein would have been called a conspiracy theory, but there was too much evidence and there was too much out already. Oh, by the way, they would have classified that as sure. a conspiracy theory if they could have. So that is why it's important to be free online. All right, we got these, this one, one more. There might be one of, uh, in front of a car or something up there. But, um, uh, that's it after this. Like you usually sometimes people hide uh hide their cans I say. But after this we're going to the dump, getting some gas, and we'll be done. I'll see you at the dump. This guy uh, is driving the same truck as us, a Corrado can. The guy on the outside's probably uh training him right now. And the, the dozer operator just gave me the number two for bay number two. It's always good to just do a little walk around anyways when you're doing it, but when you're locking the tailgate, you'll see this chrome lock into there, and you'll actually see a little knob right there. So obviously if it's good on one side, it's good enough, but you know you want it to be good on both sides. And uh, you want to check it out before I checked it out, make sure there's no garbage hanging out because there's a rubber seal that seals up all the water and we call it garbage juice and uh that keeps the water from flowing out all right here we are at the gas station yeah they, they got they've been messing with this pump for a while now they got pumped down thing about Jersey, you don't gotta fill up your tank. Someone's gonna come right around and do it for me. Alright, so because I had to, uh, I only did like a half day. Half route, really, because we got, I got help. $142, so 
It's probably about just under $300 every day to fill up.